We're building a wild pool system on the top floor of a house, 24 feet deep in the water. We're doing all kinds of fun things, some waterfalls, wet walls. Catch up on the old stuff, follow the new. We love you guys. Back to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. All right, guys, I'm really excited because we're on to the next big phase of this pool project. It may not look like a big phase, but it is to me because we had to build all these big steel structures with sliding internal beams that allow me to install them. This is 3 8 inch steel tubing, top plate and bottom plate. This is eight steel members that go way up there. You can see the trusses and this is to keep the trusses from leaning side to side because I have a privacy wall with windows in it and the wall is only six inches thick. And I can't have the trusses that sit on top of it that give me shade around the fire pit area and at the end of the pool by the deep end, I can't have those trusses lean side to side. So I've made this superstructure that will bolt to the concrete floor, have rebar members that come out of it that then go into a wide base built into a bench, a concrete bench that then rebars into the concrete floor of the pool deck. You can see how this slides back and forth that just allows me to get it up in the trusses. Once these get done, they are top cap, but you can see we designed a little bit of play in this. That's just so that we could slide it out of the way, get it up into the trusses, slide it back into place, bolt it all together, make sure the wall's true, the trusses are true, everything's leveled out, have this teeny bit of play to work with. Once everything's set in place and bolted and done, all we need to do is burn weld all the way around this. The top cap's already completed. So it's literally these side welds and those trusses can't move at all. So it's a lot of work, but I'm really fortunate because I didn't have to do it. All I had to do was come up with the design engineering side of it, um, how we wanted to do it, um, the bench design to get it to tie in. And then I handed it over to my son, my brother's son, Kaysen Patey and said, Kaysen, I need these done. He cut them, welded them, burned them out, made the sliding fixtures and uh, dropped them off. So I'm really proud of Mark's kids, my kids. They're just workers. They go crazy, dive in, get the project done. So I get to take his hard work, pack these couple hundred pound <laughs> sets of steel structures, put them in the roof trusses and we'll have our shade getting near done on the top side of the pool. All right, guys, this is going really well. It's a lot harder than I thought, just because these posts probably weigh close to 300 pounds with the top assembly. These top are almost half inch wall. This is 3 8 wall. You can see how I'm lining this up. I've got this set up for four big half inch bolts, but I also pre-planned so I wouldn't have to try and level this all up with great big bolts. I put little teeny holes so that I could just put small screws in to level it and throw some quick screws in and then later I'll go back and bolt it. But you can see right now, my main support, this is the last weld I gotta do. I left it unwelded so I could just slide this <laughs> into place. Yeah, I use my <laughs> drill as a hammer. There we go. Slide that into place. I put a couple screws in it. Then afterwards, I'll go through and I'll layer this. Right now, this is OSB. It doesn't have much strength. Um, it's used for walls, roofing, but I wanna bring this out to five inches thick to create the beam that goes from this steel post to the one nine feet away, nine feet, nine feet, all the way around this whole wall. And then I'll put some bolts and I'll put CDX half inch layers till I get five inches thick, put some eight inch bolts through it, bolt this beam to this side, do the same on the other side, once this whole thing's built, she did this side and that side being built to five inches and bolted. Then I'll double check all the levels and then I'll burn these welds out right here and then pour concrete 
in the legs on the side and the benches all in one with all the rebar. So it's going good. We're halfway done. Four down, four to go. Back to work. guys this project just keeps going on i thought i could get most of it done on saturday sunday which i still thought i could do it all in one day that was ridiculous prepping those windows took almost three hours per window between the base layer a couple days earlier and then another hour and a half on the black layer and the standoff acrylic sheets to get the window stand off to stand off the concrete that's like 36 hours of prep just in the concrete side to get ready for the windows with 12 windows in there. Now I had to tape off all these windows and get ready to bed it in. And I didn't want to rely on just this thin sheet that comes with it. So you can see I did blue tape. The blue tape comes off a little easier and then I put the duct tape over it. This is so that during the rest of the pool process, I don't nick or scratch these windows. But it's kind of oddly satisfying to get to the point of spending another full afternoon taping up these windows just so I can do that. Now, the next step, I'm gonna put on the same bonding agent I talked about before. I'll show you a quick clip of it. And I'm going to put a thin film on this after I clear off the rest of my tape. I'll put a thin layer on this, spread it perfectly smooth. The bonding agent, I'm going to build a little teepee on the two inch step of concrete that's already been prepped. And then when this goes on, it's going to hit that peak of that little pyramid shape or teepee shape I build and touch. And as I push it in, it will push outward. Oftentimes people, they want to try something different. Well, they'll try and put it all flat, the two inches wide. And what actually happens is you create bubbles everywhere. You have to build a pyramid shape and then push it in. So as it makes first contact, it starts to flatten the pyramid and push it out and the air bubbles go with it. Hopefully I put the right size little pyramid on all the way around the window, push it. And then I've got boards and bolts ready to go to then bolt it and just bolt it tighter and tighter. This, it's not silicone, but close to it, is gonna push out the sides and out the front and then make sure there's no air bubbles behind it. So that's the goal. <laughs> Wish us luck. I can't believe how long this is taken. I bet you it'll probably be another hour or more per window just bonding them in. We'll see how it goes. We got still quite a bit of daylight left. Plus we got middle of the night we can work. It'll cool off. You guys know the drill, back to work. today and this white waterproofing <laughs> is reflecting like crazy let me explain what i'm doing right now i'm in the hot tub these are all my hot tub jets you can see their little waterproof pocket i had made little pockets for a waterproofing joint right here uh, pulled out the foam sealed those in this white painted floor think of it as a waterproof dirt on a regular pool build this is the pool floor I poured that's about that thick, double mat, one inch bar. But now, I don't wanna rely on just that floor to be my waterproofing, I want multiple layers. So once that was done, from here up, think of this as almost just starting again of a pool on dirt. I'm coming up again with another floor, this this thick will have a little slope down into a drain that comes up and down right here to the finish height. The hot tub bench has come up. This will all get another layer of concrete over the whole thing. So I'll get this concrete done, then the benches, and then I'll do a fiber mesh like you see these 
little orange things on the side of the hot tub um, all the way around. So I'll have another waterproofing coat. So we'll have the outer coat, this coat, concrete, then shot, shoot gunite like a traditional pool over all of that. Then over that, I'll do a bonding coat with a fiber mesh, which is really extra overkill. And then on top of that coat we put on, which would normally be plaster, but I'll be doing a pebble finish. One of the things I've done here, the bottom of the hot tub, basic engineering, pool guys all know this, but you might be curious to find out why I've got two suction drains piped off a T right here. Um, there's been a lot of fatalities. These get a little rounded grill on them. The rounded grill is so if you sat on it, it couldn't create suction and the water could go in the side. Well, that's one safety feature. But if the grill were to break and you only had one main drain, they've had people lose their lives, unfortunately, come down with a broken grill, sit down on a single suction system, and then get stuck to it like a giant vacuum cleaner and hold them underwater and then they drown. So we always do two now. This is my secondary suction. So if you sat on this one and the screen were broken, this one would then become the backup. So I've got two. Now let's say, who knows how many years later, we broke that grill and didn't replace it, the safety grill. Then we broke this grill and didn't replace it. And then two different people at the same time sat on it exactly at the same time with broken components. Then what happens? Well, a second, another feature is I go down line of the pipe and I put in a third backup, which is a check valve spring loaded that if there's too much suction on this, it will open up and relieve that pressure. So there's three safety features. This also ties into other lines that would start sucking air. So multiple safety features, but the last thing you want is to get in a hot tub years later, have three failures and not have a fourth backup. So that's kind of what that is. The other thing is now that I've got this bolted to the floor, which would normally be floating around in dirt right now, I'll put the rebar over this. I don't want my guys that are helping me tie rebar or the guys pouring the concrete walking around to here and step on the pipes and break it. So rather than standing off the pipes with little blocks of rock or this and that, I've got this great solid floor to work off of. So I just split a T in half. I can put a little glue on it. And now I'm making a standoff that isn't a sharp rock that could puncture a pipe if someone jumped on it hard. And also, and I glue that up and I put it right there now, if someone stands on that pipe, now there's no movement in it. And that's my standoff to hold the pipe up in case someone stepped on it here, 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 and over there. So, hope that makes sense. It's a lot of talking. And enough heat. Back to work. All right, guys, I'm finally to one of the most exciting parts of this build. I know it's going to be extra echoey because I'm in the center of this giant pit, but I've got the floor all laid out for the floor cable to come out of this hole that goes all the way up two feet above the water line, goes over out of the water line and back in a tube all the way to the basement. And that way the cables are actually in the water till it gets to the level of the pool, continues on, so there's no siphon capability to empty the pool. The cables then turn around and return dry into the basement where the mechanical geared drive system that moves the floor up and down operates. So those four cables now are gonna come into here. I made this in an earlier video. Oh my gosh, that's heavy. There's pulleys that sit on here. So what I did is I put little V locks, V marks in the bottom, since this was all laser cut and set and welded. I can now place this on the floor. I know that the four cables come in this direction. Two of them that come this way go around pulleys. There's guides that keep it from jumping off the pulleys and go out on that red line, that red line to each one of these that also have V cuts. And these two cables will go way out to the ends. Those go out the edge of the pool. There'll be two more cables come on this side, past multiple guides to keep the cables perfectly aligned with the large pulley sets. 
They'll go out on these two angles and chase this red line and this red line and line those up with the bees. So all the cables on this system are exactly the same length. So the stretch and adjustment will always be moving together. They're all individually tightened, capable to fine tune the platform. But I'm gonna get these pushed out. I'm gonna bolt this down with a bunch of big anchor bolts that we glue and bond into this floor. This floor right here is two feet thick, double mat bar, a tire footing. Now the bottom of the pool, I'm coming up another eight and a half inches to this point. All the holes you see through here are for all the rebar that's going to pass through these holes. After I bolt it down, I'll rebar all these in. These have the same rebar pass-throughs. They'll also be bolted. Then I pour concrete tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. all the way up to this point. This is all you're going to see. Then I can drop the pulleys on and then I got a big double handle latch that drops in. Pin sets into some holes with stainless steel. I can always service the pulley mechanism. And now I've got redundancy in the anchoring of this and these because the bolts themselves are designed to hold over 400% of the max load I'll pull down. So the bolts would hold all on their own. Combine that with eight and a half inches of concrete that are rebarred through these units. Those would hold these to the floor more than I need to use to pull the platform down. It's a floating platform. I'm going to drag it underwater. So it's redundant on multiple levels on more than the strength I need of the bolts and then far more weight in the concrete than what I'm pulling down. So we're anchored really good. I got a lot of work to do, a lot of rebar to tie, four swimming pool drains to go in here. Those drains will have steep slopes to them so that underneath this platform, a little robotic vacuum can cruise around and anything being knocked around underneath the platform, leaves, debris that gets in there, can get sucked into four low points in the bottom of this pool, go through the filter system. So that's a lot of talking. I have a lot of work to do. You guys know the drill. Back to work. Coming up about nine o'clock at night. That big pipe right there, three inch line comes in, makes a big full loop around and grabs those four drains. So that makes a total of six suction drains in the swimming pool so that no one gets suctioned to the bottom of the pool plus safety relief suction valve. And it's hard to tell here when we pour the concrete, I've got the tape on the sides. The concrete will slope, high point being the dead center where the cables are right there, and the other high point being the black line around the edge, eight and a half inches thick. The low points will be those four suction drains, and they're quite a bit lower, so it's like a V slope to each of those four drains. So then any silt or dirt or sediment down on the bottom always wants to work its way to those four low points and out the suction through the filter system. So, oh my gosh, got a lot of work done. Some stuff go down. Those are the three giant waterfalls that will be coming in. A uh, lot done, a lot to go. You guys know the drill. About to work. All right, guys, it's the middle of the night. Just finished putting spacers underneath all the pipes. I've done it with PVC blocks and I've got them everywhere. You can see I can even stand and walk around on these pipes. So before I put rebar, <laughs> I can't even balance, I'm tired. <laughs> before I even put rebar on here, I wanted to make sure that while walking around and placing rebar, someone can't step on these pipes, bend them down and crack them. So 
Uh, you can see everything's now floating. I've got the clearance I want for the concrete to go underneath. I've got a stinger vibrator to vibrate around all the pipes. Everything is sealed, bonded, ready to go. Got one big area here. I had a solid concrete block, so I went ahead and glued it down, sealed it up. But anyway, I can walk along my little balance beam here. I've also got a secondary protection. If you were to look right there, I've got a two-part rubber. It's about a quarter inch thick after all the layers. I always put it right here because pipes tend to crack, not the pipes, but the skimmers that come with pools tend to crack right there. There were no cracks. What usually causes that is they make these pretty thin. I wish they'd make them the equivalent of a Schedule 80, but they make these skimmer drains really thin. And right there, it's plenty strong where you thread in a threaded coupler to a two inch pipe. However, they, um, it feels like they don't even plan on the fact that you got con concrete, rebar, guys walking around that aren't paying attention and they step on things and the weak link is right there and they crack it. So just to add extra protection, I've wrapped that in a quarter inch thick of rubber at every single box where these tend to crack and create leaks. Now, in this pool, I don't have dirt underneath. I got two feet of concrete, so the water really wouldn't go anywhere, but it's a habit of mine to rubber wrap the bad joint on these skimmer boxes. I think I'm doing more talking than working now. I'm gonna turn this off, start laying rebar, but we're ready. Concrete, 6 a.m. Back to work. All right, guys, it's a good morning. Stayed up most of the night, got a couple hours sleep, and uh, started pouring concrete. We got the rebar now down, all the pass-throughs through our steel cable guides, center cable guide, and the pipe all braced up off the floor so concrete can run underneath it. And it's uh, glued down to the floor off the spacer block so it can't lift up, but it actually wouldn't. <laughs> we got it covered in rebar, so. Um, let's mix them up, throw down anywhere between a foot and eight and a half inches, depending on where it is and how it slopes. Most, for the most part, eight and a half inches is the average of this entire floor pour, so that's working.